Welcome to Left Footers and our movie review of Han Solo, a Star Wars story. Yes, that's yes. the one. <laughs> With me is Mike Landry. Um, from from where, actually? Could you fill us in in what you do? Uh, I'm chaplain to Evergreen Catholic Schools. I uh, work in 10 schools west of Edmonton, Spruce Grove, Stony Plain, Devon, Westlock, and Hinton and spend a lot of time causing a lot of havoc in a lot of people's classrooms and then leaving and letting the teachers try and settle them all down again. Oh, that's fun. It is. So, Star Wars. Star Wars. Star Wars. I went into it and I went into it with really high expectations because Rogue One is probably my second favorite Star Wars movie ever. Like it was, wow. I just thought it was a tremendous movie. It was a great story. Okay. And so I went in with really high hopes and I liked a lot of things about it. I struggled to really love the plot. Mm -hmm. I, found, I found the plot was not, was not as strong as I would like it to be, but I, I really enjoyed a lot. Donald Glover's portrayal of Lando was spot on amazing. Indeed. Spot yeah. on amazing. Everything you've heard about me is true. And I loved the extra dynamic with Chewbacca being a little bit of a raging maniac at the start of the movie. I thought that was a lot of fun too, because normally he's just so calm, cool, and collected. Always. For a guy who yells everything he communicates. Ah! The acting was solid for Star Wars, because mm -hmm. Star Wars has never been a movie you kind of look at and say, we're coming to watch really great acting performances. No, in, in, indeed. <laughs> That's impossible! It's not something you expect to be. Oh, no. The expression on his face during that scene was pretty darn epic, though, you have to admit. Like, Darth Vader's, you know, he just really kept Very it. stoic. Very, yes. very yeah. stoic. Because I'm really just a child at heart. Who would you be in Star Wars? That's always my question, you know. I, mean, I, I would want to be Luke Skywalker. I'd want to be the Jedi to be able to, to do all of those things. To be like, right? You know, you get, you get the pop bottle to come right over to you. Or, or you want to give me an easier penance, Father Roger. What? One Hail Mary's too much? <laughs> but I think I'd probably, if I was actually legitimately a character in Star Wars, I'd be one of those guys in the in, in like Red Squadron who got blown up in the middle of like the Death Star battle very, very quickly. And then, you know. I could see myself being the stormtrooper in The New Hope, bumping his head. Those were the droids I was looking, looking for. for. Exactly. <laughs> Take over. So would I be wrong to think that there's some kind of analogy of faith with Star Wars? Well, if, uh, if you ever believed anything Father Mike Moreau ever said, there, there has to be because he found a way to work Star Wars into every homily he possibly could. So yeah, he'd light that one up and take care of you, no problem, in a heartbeat. George Lucas, from what I understand, uh, was a, a big student of, of mythology, mm -hmm. of, of different religious beliefs, and he borrowed heavily not only from Christianity, but from Buddhism and Taoism when he was writing kind of the original treaties of Star Wars. Father Mike used to talk about how he was tied to a, a former professor of his named Joseph Campbell, who, who sort of did this whole, you know, the hero's journey and, mm -hmm. and talked about different things and in a sense sets up the arc that both Luke and Anakin have to walk through to get to their, their final destiny at the end of Return of the Jedi. You know, I think the Force, I think he was not going for any kind of reference to the Holy Spirit when he wrote it, but I think what was interesting to me is that the Force really took on characteristics I don't think he imagined when he started it. Hmm. Because when Obi-Wan can Obi then? Hmm? So the Holy Spirit is in midichlorians. Mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell, is our connection to the Holy Spirit. This is what I'm getting. We don't talk about midichlorians anymore. <laughs> That's because my count's higher than yours. <laughs> we need a midichlorian count. The reading is off the chart. Because you're ordained. Touche. No, but I, I think the Force, I mean, Obi-Wan explains the Force to Luke in A New Hope. It's mm -hmm. this, this, you know, the, the, the power that binds all the universe together. And it's really, it's impersonal. It's good and evil and balanced and everything together. But then you get to Rogue One. You know, trust the Force. When I think of an impersonal energy field, I think of Wi-Fi. That's an impersonal energy field. And I wouldn't trust a whole heck of a lot to Wi-Fi because Wi-Fi can be fantastic. And Wi-Fi can go down. Our, That's when you, uh, you know bargain with Wi-Fi, sacrifice your first child, and, you know, say that it will become a, an internet technician for the greater glory of Wi-Fi. Well, you know, so I think, you know, he writes it as this impersonal force, like mm -hmm. Wi-Fi. And then, and then it's like, trust the force. And, and I think you end up with these kind of these two opposing groups in Star Wars. You have a group of people who want to learn how to trust the force, mm -hmm. to be guided by the force, you know? And if it's an impersonal energy field, an impersonal energy field does what it always does. 
It doesn't have a conscious will to guide you in one direction mm -hmm. or to guide you towards good or, you know, you're not going to trust that kind yeah. of on its own. And then there's others who are trying to control the force. The dark side. I think about how people can look at faith. And one of the great challenges is learning to trust that God is looking out for us, that God is guiding us, that God is trying to, to direct us in a particular direction, that God, in spite of the fact that everything seems to be lost around us, God is still working out for, not only for our good, but ultimately for our salvation. Mm -hmm. Not just for our good here, but, but for our ultimate good. And, and there are others who are trying to, to in a sense, control you know, what, what he's doing in the world for their own purposes. And I think you know, that's the inherent struggle in Star Wars. I'm one with the force, the force is with me. I'm one with the force and the force is with me. I'm one with the force and the force is with me. I'm one with the force and the force is with me. Do you, do you trust or, or do, you, do you try to control? And, and the thing about the Holy Spirit, you can't control the Holy Spirit. We can't, we can't manipulate it. We can't direct it to our own, direct him to our own desires, our own wishes. We, we have to somehow work with it. So it's not a perfect analogy for the Holy Spirit, no, of obviously. of course not. But I think it's, it, there, there's a lot of pieces there that you can work with. Hmm. So you got the Holy Spirit. Do you have any image for God the Father? Yeah, I don't. Because, I mean, you have images of the church sort of in Rogue One with the followers of the Jedi. Yeah, I don't know that you get, you get some good Jesus ones in both Anakin and Luke. Oh, absolutely. Uh, the one that blew my mind one time was, was reading Father Mike's, some of his writings, mm -hmm. and he talked about Anakin being the Jesus character in Star Wars because he's the one who can descend to the darkness of the Sith and come back again, just like Jesus the one who can descend into the dead and come back again. But yeah, you're right, there, there really is no great connection to the Father if you look just at the movies for what they are. <laughs> Luke was dressed up to look like a priest in Return of the Jedi. Looks like he was wearing a cassock. Actually, yeah, you <laughs> mentioned it. Actually, yeah, that's true. You ever, you ever see that meme on the internet of the Last Supper and they're all holding lightsabers except for Judas? Like they've all got blue ones and green ones. I have and not Judas, seen that meme. Judas no. has a red lightsaber. Really? And everybody else has blue and green ones around the table. It's like, yeah, but only detecting evil was this easy. <laughs> now you can't wipe them off. They're holograms. <laughs> Look, all you gotta do is think a few moves ahead, anticipate your opponent. There's a lesson to be learned here. What's your thought of Grey Jedis? What's a Grey Jedi? And those who try to use both the light side and the dark side to classify themselves as Grey, Je a gray Jedi. That you can use both. No powers are evil, it's what the intention is behind the person. Some of the Jedi beliefs were, were clearly unhealthy. Mm. I mean, the idea of total, complete detachment. I mean, I mean, you vowed celibacy. You know, you, you've, you've obviously, you, you've separated yourselves from certain things in the world. You've vowed yourself to obedience mm -hmm. to, to your bishop. But at the same time, you haven't vowed yourself not to care about others. And, and their whole thing about no attachments almost seemed like it was, you needed to learn not to care. Mm -hmm. You know, to, to try and see the world purely through an objective eye. And our Lord doesn't even do that. Our Lord especially doesn't do that. I mean, why do we learn to call God our Father? Because, you know, we could call him the creator who is out there somewhere, but mm -hmm. that makes him completely impersonal. That's the last thing that, that God is. You know, you bring up the question, you know, who's the Father in, in Star mm -hmm. Wars? Because there's got to be something more, yep. more tangible, more personal. And, and, and clearly, if you look at the Jedi for what they are, you know, apart from the story, but if you try to look at them objectively, to get to that level of detachment, I mean, C.S. Lewis, I believe it is, that said, you know, the only place outside of heaven where you can be perfectly safe from the dangers and perturbations of love is hell. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think in a lot of ways, if you, if, you epit if, you, if you follow that road down where the Jedi are going, well, in the end, Vader's the one who does it. He's the one who detaches from everybody and becomes completely sold to his role as, as a force user. On the flip side, you look at it and you sort of say, well, there are certain things that are, that are evil that we can't do. You can't do an evil thing for a good purpose. Control. <laughs> <laughs> Next week on <our> Leftovers, <laughs> we find out how to dispose of a body. <laughs> Bring out your dead! Here's one! Ninepence. I'm not dead! What? Nothing. Here's your ninepence. I'm not dead! Like, there's, there's certain things that we, we, we just, you don't do. You don't... You don't go messing with, with the occult. I mean, this is, I have mm -hmm. these conversations with students all the time, you know, 
Why does it say horoscopes on my examination of conscience? But being? listen, they... Which king went to Endor to speak to the witch of Endor? Come on, man! Where's it's the, in the scriptures. Where's the Ewoks The holy there? texts of the Jedis. That was my actually the second point I was going to ask. So are you for what Yoda says? You know, to hell with the books. Burn it down. So it is time. The Jedi order to end. Time it is. For you to look past a pile of old books. Hmm? The sacred Jedi text! For me, that was sort of that moment of, the Jedi are, are over, but something new is going to come in its place. I think there's a very 21st century look at organized religion. Oh, okay. You don't know, burn the books. You know, away with everything that was there before. But it's Yoda. Well, maybe spiritual, but not religious. But this is Yoda who's talking. Yoda is this trickster. He begins, the first impressions we get with Yoda, it's true. You know, are like, oh, you're looking for him. Mm. You seek Yoda. You know him? Mm. Take it to him, I will. <laughs> and yet he's there to sort of just get Luke to expand his view, because the books are saved at the end of uh, The Last Jedi. So clearly Yoda knows what's going on. But I think he needs just to push Luke, because Luke is getting in a rut. He's wrapped up in himself. Yeah. Wrapped up in his own failure. I mean, it, it's, again, mm -hmm. his story is our story. I, I would say at face value, it's a very 21st century look at yeah. religion, right? You know, in fact, that whole, that whole sequence from Luke about getting rid of the Jedi and, and even Yoda's, Yoda's prodding mm -hmm. comment, burn the books, start it over. It's very much this one, you know, why I love Jesus but hate religion. See, the problem with religion is it never gets to the core. It's just behavior modification, like a long list of chores. It's very, it very much fits into the mindset that a lot of people who are going to see these movies agree with. Absolutely, let's you know get rid of the institutional church, get rid of the priesthood, get rid of all of these things, and just get down to the core of what it's supposed to be about, which is Jesus, who we meet in the book and encounter in the church, and everything else like that. But, but their experience of it had been so detached from that that, mm -hmm. that almost some of them have to. I mean, it's 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 more complicated than we can do in a, in a video like this. You're right, Yoda is a trickster who's who's trying to snap Luke out of it, and it works. It does. It's interesting how the Jedi, when things go badly, they all just go isolate themselves off on a planet somewhere. Like every priest. <laughs> I don't even know what to say to that. <laughs> you know it to be true. In your own little rectory, waiting for somebody to crash land their spaceship in the pool in the back. Just like PBS of old, please continue to support us with your views.